I, Savea and Mia, I am just experimenting, thinking about light spectrums. And I had some, you know, discussions this morning with myself, you know, some guidance from people around me. And I was thinking, I was thinking about, you know, I was talking to Sean about like crucifixion and how, you know, from a medical standpoint, it wouldn't have worked. And I always believed that, you know. You know, he had his views on it, and he said it could have been a pole. Even then, you know, you know, all the way, you know, I won't say what I think on it. But I've seen enough death in my life to know what happens to blood. You know, not like blood lines, but what happens to blood. Um, this this one here that grows here all the time. Um, And it it made me think about what some of, what the four pillars of her weight could be. Could be directions, say directions of a cross. He put a circle around that. And I am, there's some signs that I used to use and at work. And I just, I was thinking about that and too about what that meant. And I see that same symbol in the medical field, you know, one side of a, one side, I always thought it would be nice to have nurses and doctors be more together, you know, they're training almost the same. And I thought, you know, if healers were healers, you know, who would need to license a healer? You know, I said that in that video the other day, like, no board of nursing can certify my brand of healing that I already have within me. (laughs) Sean said, well, you're not God. And I said, well, you know, I didn't say that to him at the time, but I said, no one can tell me what I am. You know, and it's not arrogance to believe in my, to believe in me in here. It's not, it's not arrogance at all. It's, it's Stephen Philip Lindquist, you know, believing in Stephen Philip Lindquist. We can get all the semantics of me, you, I, we, us, all of that. But Stephen Philip Lindquist believes in Stephen Philip Lindquist. You know. And we talked about what spheres are and how directions in a sphere are like what direction are you going? It's like, you know, it's like a, yeah, it is like that. Um, so I was, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about, you know, I said I wasn't going to sacrifice anymore, except for Stephen Philip Lindquist. My innate health in here 
is worth more to you, to my daughters, than anything. You know. Maybe in time you'll realize that. You know, I send this out to Sweden and Norway and the New York Times. I don't know why. I just, I was thinking, you know, back in the days when grandma and grandpa got married, they weren't supposed to get married because they were, you know, Norwegian and Swedish. And back then they didn't mix. It was, they were pretty segregated. And it was funny because, I mean, it was a pretty tight knit community. I mean, you had Norwegians on one side and Swedish people on the other. Same way as like in Norway and Sweden, I suppose. But um, they did anyways. And my great grandma, Ida, grandma told me this, that she was going to buy grandma Esther a new coat to not marry um, Grandpa Philip. And <laughs> She was like, no, you know, and they got married anyways. Um, I was thinking about that today, about, you know, when I was talking to you about loving who you love and not being afraid of that, you know, don't, hold on, you know, don't let judgments from other people rule your, your life. No, Sabea and Mia, I'm, you know, I think people have wanted me to feel shame and guilt in my life. And I have like, I don't feel guilty or ashamed of anything I did. You know, I don't guilt or fear, that little mind killer, you know. I never, and you know, and people were like, well, you're so aloof, and you're, people at Cabrini used to say that to me, well, one person in particular, she didn't even know me, she didn't even talk to me, she goes, well, everybody thinks you're so aloof, and you're better than everybody, and I was like, I never said that, and if you would ask me a question, I would be honest with you. But they never took the time to ask, you know? And when they did, they were like, you know, some of them didn't like what I said. I said that I would bring them with me. Or I actually heard once when I was there, I said, well, if he leaves, we're all going with him. I don't know if that came true, but I sometimes see them. Some of them are doing okay and some aren't. I guess that's the way it goes. I mean, I, right now, I feel really good. I was looking at my palms. Sean was like, well, and you know what? My belief is that Stephen Philip Lindquist, you know, I can do what I want. I always have, you know, my spirit is free. It's not, you know, it's always been free. Even when I've had hard times, you know, you know, rules, I've said that before, sometimes they're there just for rules, you know, and yeah, I, go, I abide by them, but I'm not going to stand by and just, you know, you know, I'm not going to break under any rule, you know. And when I was younger, they called me oppositional defiant disorder. <laughs> and you know what? I think in some ways I was, you know. I was a product of my environment, that's for sure. And 
you know? And this one guy, and I remember in high school, they sent me to a counselor and, they, and he used to say, well, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. And I hated that for the longest time. And then I started to like it. Then it was like, you know what? Good for you for having that opinion. You know, good for you. You know, I had a mohawk. You know, I had hair. I would wear my hair down over my eyes. <laughs> I mean, Chrissy taught me how to make um, pants. So I made like these paisley pants, just bright, colorful pants. Um, I wore these high riding boots and joppers and a long black trench coat. You know, I, I grew out of that. No, <laughs> I grew out of that. But it was a fun time, you know. And I always thought, like, Savannah and Mia, if you dyed your hair, different colors. I would be like, it's only hair. Just don't worry about it. I wouldn't say anything about it. You know, other people might, but I would be like, you want to have green hair, blue hair, red hair? At least get the right stuff, you know, you know. Or experiment. <laughs> I did that sometimes too. I had white hair for a while. I actually straightened my curly hair too. And I talked to this woman about what to use in it. And um, so I went and bought it. And then my hair got so straight, it was like a board. I couldn't like, I had to cut it. Because it just was like. And um, I didn't try that again. <laughs> um, I saved all my IDs that I had from the past. Um, and all my badges that I wore as a nurse and the certification pins that I had. You know, I was a critical care, uh, registered critical care nurse. I had a CMC um, certification for cardiac medicine and I had a certification in emergency nursing. You know, I worked hard on those. I spent hours studying, you know, and some of it was like knowledge that I already knew like, I could figure out some stuff, like, just by, like, okay, well, that that makes sense. And so I would do that. And people used to call me, oh, Dr. Steve. And I was like, you know what? You know, some of the residents ask questions, like, well, what do you think? And they do that a lot. But, you know, I was like... I think you better do something or I'm calling the attending. And then they were like, what do you want me to do? You know, <laughs> it's like they were just out of medical school and they thought they knew more than, you know, the ICU nurses. <laughs> uh, about some things, but not about how to, you know, how to keep people alive. You know, they had, they knew how to write things, you know, nurses there knew how to how to do the minute to minute thing you know I always thought it would be nice if you know physicians had to be nurses for a while or they had to like in part of the residency they had to do that you know they had to actually you know spend a month in residency at the bedside so that they could you know see what their orders were doing you know and be like, this doesn't work. This is why you guys call us all the time at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, you know, that's what I, and I told one of the residents that once I said, well, if you're going to be a dick to the nurses, they're going to call you at three o'clock in the morning, just for time and all, or just to say, you know, something that they already know is fine. And <laughs> they're going to just call and say, wakey, wakey. You know, it's for being mean. I guess I did. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do that to them. I would call the attending. I called this one neurosurgeon once. And he was like, oh, we'll be there in a minute. And it was like 10 minutes later. And he goes, well, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, I did tell you, Dr. So-and-so. 
and then you get to the room and it's an emergency, why don't you frickin' listen, you know? That was the problem, too, in the ER, and I think they finally got to respect me when I said, oh, no, don't worry about this patient who's having chest pain, and, you know, he's just got an EF of, like, 8%, and, you know, blah, 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 and he's, like, you know, at pulmonary hypertension. He'll be just fine. Just take your time. Take a break, you know? And he was like, oh. You know, I knew what I was talking about. You know, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up. It was just something on my mind. <clears throat> you know, and that power of belief that I have in myself and me, Stephen Philip Lindquist, you know, I think the others would want me to think that they're little parts of me still need to be fixed. You know? You know, I've already done my healing. And I'm telling you guys this, Savannah and Mia, so that you'll know, you know, Savannah, you said that to me. I'm broken. Tricky little girl. I saw in you something different, too. You too, Mia. I, I miss swinging you around up in the air. Family-wise, was just a terrible place. No. It wasn't mutually agreed upon either. So. And I don't know, I... I guess I was thinking about you know, other stuff today, too. about my own sphere of influence that I have on myself, on Stephen Philip Lundquist. And putting up those shields again in my mind. I know. If I am carrying those, you know, the weight of direction or you know, you know, I'm not going to let anybody tell me what I am or what I'm not. You know, I, you know, I've always believed in Stephen Philip Lindquist. And people have tried and tried and tried and tried to break me. I went to treatment once and they were like, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. And I just, you know what I did? I said, fine. If you want me to be a liar, I'll be a liar for you. And then, they were like, oh, you're so much better now. On the inside, I was like, you cannot touch my soul. It's already free. It's always been free, you know. There's nothing, and I can see that around me, you know. There is nothing that'll break that in me. You know. You know. talking about spirituality again, you know, about, you know, finding, you know, I've had all those spiritual teachers in my life, 
and it's funny too because I just am like, you know, and more than just people, you know, you know, in one hand I see, you know, a cup, and the other, the wheel of life, or the wheel of fortune. You know, animals have been my teachers. You know, mercy has been my, not the hospital. But my mercy, you know, has been a teacher. And compassion, too. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if I talked about compassion fatigue. I did a little bit. Or in the ICU, they call it burnout. You know? And I wasn't ever burnt out from patients. I love taking care of patients. I was more... I was tired of dealing with... Um, the internal politics of, and within a hospital system, and this is, I tried to explain this to them in the past, within a hospital system, you have these cultures, these structures within the building, within an organization. There was an ICU culture, there was a CBICU culture, there was a BMT culture, I mean, it, a PEDS culture, an emergency culture, there was all critical care as a whole then was an umbrella and, you know, and then just the general wards, you know. And I tried to explain that, you know, you know, and I guess, I mean, some people call that organizational psychology or industrial psychology. I was looked into that as a field and, you know, the University of Phoenix, you know, I already have enough credits to have that degree. They're just too narrow-minded to see it. You know? They keep calling me, though, and I'm like, you know what? You're not willing to bend. You know? So I don't need a degree for that. I already know. So within this, like, organizational structure, or you can look at it in aspect of any corporation or any kind of business or the planet or any other kind of a family. I mean, you can look at it as a family too. Um, but in the hospital, since that's where I spent a lot of time working, is you can see the structures and I always wanted, and I did this too, I encourage people to go, like if you want to float to another unit, go and, um, go and train with them get to know them, get to know, you know, to understand them. Like I would cross train to the ER from St. At St. Joe's, I cross trained to the ER. So I was like, okay, I can do this. So that when our census was low in the ICU, I could go to the ER, you know, and I cross trained to like, you know, to the psych unit and I went up there and worked. So, I mean, then I had a choice. Then it was like I was valuable enough that I could be like, well, if you need me, you know, I can do emergencies or critical care or, you know, pretty much I could have worked. I, I did work. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I always encourage people to do that. And I would be like, if I was working in the ICU, I'd be like, if you want to come up to the ICU and just, you know, spend the night, watch me, you know, take care of patients, would talk, and we would do that. You know, we would do that, and that's how you build teams and get people to realize that within the concept of an organization, you need to be able to go to different areas and understand how they function. That's why I thought doctors should be 
have residency as nurses for a while so that they understood you know what they were up on what they were up against you know what the minute to minute you know day to day stuff was like and i think that you know even traditional healers it would you know it would be nice for them to spend time in the hospital and be like okay this is where we were this is where you know our, our transitioning and this is where we want to be we want to be in a healing community and use i mean use that understanding in a way that values you know all forms of healing i think that's you know in a lot of ways the nursing board is not so much there they're not there about healing they're not there about healing nurses they're there you know as a tool of the government basically they say that they're there to protect the people from nurses. The hospital protects people from nurses. You know, they fire them. You know. I got fired from the university. I don't really believe that I was fired, though. They never talked to me. You know, they never told me. They never called and said, you're fired. You know. It's all right, though. You know, I gave up being a nurse, you know, because of that ugliness there. And I thought, yeah, that's what I thought. Just, yeah. Some of them at the nursing board aren't even nurses, so they don't even understand the day-to-day -day stuff, you know. I thought about doing Reiki and doing, you know, some energy work. And I was like, I already can do that. You know. Isn't that funny how, you know, that kind of innate knowledge that I have about that is my own healing. And as much as people would say that, oh, you're not well. <laughs> I would say take a look at yourself. You know, why would you put your, you know, why would you put yourself on me like that? Why would you put your need for me to help you on you? You know? So, I keep getting these messages on the side, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, just put my glasses on so I can see them. I like that. I'll take them out. So, I want you two to know Savannah and Mia. You know, I love you. And I know that wherever you are, wherever I am, you know, we're going to be together. And there is no one, not anyone, that can stop that. Not even me. So, you can't even. I think that's what's, I think that's what you said, Mia, you want to see my whole family? You know, and it was me and you and Savannah. Mia, I went to my thought, oh, she's going to be like here. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you know, she is so much like me. And Sabaya, to be honest, I thought, yeah, she'll be like my mom. And then I'm like, I look at you and I'm just like, no. <laughs> The three of us, you know, just like Chrissy, Margie, and me. You know, just like Esther, Alice, and Harold. I can continue, but I won't. I already know. There are no powers in this world or any world that can stop that from happening. And I, you, me, all of us are going to have to be used to that. The court cannot take you away from me. You know, they can sign a paper or not sign a paper. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It's a piece of paper. You know, I'm not afraid of the court. I'm not even afraid of my own life. I said, Sean, I told Sean that, I, I said, I'm sure that there are people that hate me. You know. I don't care. I don't care. I would still help them. You know? Maybe everybody loves me. Maybe this, you know, time is for me to, like, talk about my story and, you know, said memory isn't um, stagnant, changes over time. And I think this is like a, a diary or a video you know, saying that, you know, this is Stephen Philip Lindquist, you know, and he doesn't change over time. You know, his spirit is still free. You know, he learns, you know. I've learned things in my life. You know. And I think that's what, you know, that's what has gotten me in trouble in relationships with people is that I always want to build and I always want to make new things and I always want to create and I want to, I want to do more. And sometimes, you know, I think people would say, well, why aren't you just happy with what you have? You know, I am happy with what I have, and don't get me wrong on that, but there's always something driving me to better myself or to experience new things, and I think some people or other people don't like that. They like, they like, oh, let's stay the status quo, let's not change, let's like, and I'm like, well, you know. Okay, go ahead, do that. You know, catch up later. I like to change and new and know new things. And, um, 
Yeah, I gotta apply for a job today. You know, I was thinking about that. I talked to um, my father about that. He was saying go out of the country, and I was like, you know, I thought about it. I was thinking about that in the other room. I was <laughs> thinking about grandma again. I'm thinking about Thor's hammer and what that meant to me. I was thinking about I wish I could explain some of the like visions, you know, that I've had and things that I've seen in a way that would make sense without making it sound like I was schizophrenic. I'm not. You know. I'm just, you know. I have never been more whole than Stephen Lundquist, you know. Maybe that's, I said that yesterday, maybe they don't want me to be that way. Maybe they want me to be fractured. And their influence is saying, oh, be fractured. And I'm like, you know. No one really can you know, no one can break my spirit. I've already been broken before. And I don't even think I was broken then, you know. I'm going to look. I... You know, I depend on my own guides and my own spirituality to like, you know, to guide me. And I accept, you know, I accept help from others and from, you know, new sources of information. I don't have to believe that anymore the information that they're peddling on me. You know, I can just protect my mind and doesn't mean I'm done sharing with you. You know, I'll continue to share with you. And I will put some things aside for a later time. I told you, I don't know if I told you this, but I felt like I had, like I can walk around and I can feel like you know, wolves coming out of me and birds. <sighs> Sometimes I think I have like these giant wings behind me that either like fan up or fan down. And these, you know. <laughs> Kitty comes with me sometimes. <laughs> I can see him, he's like licking his paw, sitting in the box with me. I know you think that's probably like, hmm, dad, what are you like? You know. But like I said, my internal beliefs, 
add Stephen Philip Lundquist. Form 7-11-1971 in here. No. And there isn't any being capable of changing that. Not even in the future. I was thinking outside, I was like thinking about Eckhart Tolle. <laughs> and I thought, you know, you know, one now, what I think of the present and the future. And the places that I need to still walk. Not in the sense that I'm going to be walking forever, but in the sense that there's still places that I need to see and share with people. Sean says everybody's on their own path. You know. Sometimes I say, well, if you, you know, that saying, if you can't feed him, join him. I'm always like, mm. no. I don't know. I just, I like, it's funny, I was going to say, I like talking to you guys right here, you know. And it's it's different when I can't see myself. You know, it's different when I can't, when I don't have my glasses on, because then I can't see, I can actually, but, you know, I can't see all the facial, you know. Um. I've trained my eyes well enough to know that I can see just fine. You know. Um. Let's see what. I was thinking what else I wanted to talk to you guys about. I want to know what you're doing in school. I know that that's, you know. I'll email your instructors, call the school, and ask, you know, if they can send me reports they were supposed to, you know. You know. I suppose they won't let me know. But I have the two of you where it matters the most up in here. I wanted to say, and your mother can have your physical bodies. But your spirit's with me. You know. You're part of me. And she can't take that away from you. And that will kill her. that knowledge that she can't take that away from you. you know, that'll be her undoing. You know, right here. Stephen Falkland. You know. And I can easily just 
be done. And I won't. I'll continue to talk to you and send you messages on a daily basis. You know, sometimes more than once a day. <laughs> Depends on what I'm thinking about, you know. No, it's, we had a, people come through here, check out the place, you know, I don't know, I want you to like, find ways to communicate with me, if you can. I know in my heart, Sabea and Mia, that whatever they try to make Stephen Phillip believe, I can just like that. And they don't like that. You know? I made a couple vows in my life. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I made one really important one. I did. And that's my power over her. You know, that's my power over her. And I don't mean her, your mother, you know, you know who I mean, what I'm talking about. I said I wasn't going to say mean anymore. You know what I'm talking about. Savannah and Mia, you too. have no idea what your father's capable of. And I love you so much. I'll keep talking, keep sending you these messages, you know. But I'm going to keep you where I have you. That's the safest place for you right now. I love you. Talk later.